was heard over the voice of the party. All chess players should have a hobby, according to Tartikauer. I'm trying to remember. There was... Uh, it was not Taimanov, no. There was a Grandmaster who once opined, at least I have my music. And music would count as a hobby. Um, absolutely. So we'll see how many people are able to join up. Um, I'll see if I can figure out how to advertise the link in my chat room. Uh, it's a little tricky because my chat device is not connected to my computer. Um, but, you know, maybe I could figure this out before the tournament starts. Let's see, French Defense Arena 3-2 Casual. Got my link. Um, pop it in over here. That should work. So, yeah, anybody feel free if you want to. To join up there's no compulsion if we don't find enough players for the tournament I suppose then I will just um, play some games in the lobby and attempt to play a French defense against whatever occurs all right yeah not a problem so um, yeah also FYI people if you want to learn an opening creating a tournament can often be a good way to go um, Opponents will like to join rated tournaments in general. In general, unrated events tend not to be as popular as rated ones. Um, and also, uh, it does help if you are able to download the open broadcaster software and stream your attempt. Um, so that way people will be aware that you have a tournament going on. I understand that not everybody gets listed on the front page. I kind of wish that policy changed a little bit. It'd be great to see more people listed there. Um, regardless of the, their strength, as long as they're serious about trying to improve the game, they show a commitment to it, they show a commitment to um, being nice to people watching, and try to encourage people to play better and you know as long as they're making a solid effort I would I'd like to see more people listed but that's not my choice um, is giveaway variant new no under Lee chess this goes by the name of anti chess uh, giveaway has been around for a while um, it's based on the fix giveaway rule set which I think is the same as ICC's rule set. Um, however, on anti-chess, the one difference that they have is that you can't castle. But other than that, it's still giveaway on Lee Chess. Um, it's unfortunate that the rule set used on Lee Chess differs significantly from the popular rule set elsewhere, but it's such a subtle difference that what can you do? Uh, loser's chess is quite different. It's um, basically you're playing a normal chess game with all the normal rules except you have to capture if you can and you want to lose everything except your king. Uh, also getting checkmated is a good thing rather than a bad thing. So um, other than that it's just normal chess. So if you get put in check you have to get out of check but subject to the rule that if you can capture you must capture so if you have multiple ways to get out of check but one of those is a capture you have to play a capture it's tricky and I don't understand why people play it but a lot of people do um, so yeah I'm gonna learn an opening here today it's gonna be good fun Oh, by the way, they did move the sound menu under your profile menu. Just FYI. Ten, nine. All right, eight, here we go. Seven, six, five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one, one. Zero. All right. Let's see if we got a round one pairing. Oh, we missed the pairing. That's okay. Um. 
So yeah, I get to stay here in the lobby for the tournament and watch the game in progress. Or I could go click on the game and spectate it live. That's hmm, kind of a tricky decision. Okay, let me go watch the game. So I could go back to the tournament after looking at this. Um, well, this is interesting. Black has launched a kingside attack. This is pretty bold. I've not seen this idea in quite some time. Okay, and white counter sacrifices. Or not counter sacrifices, white sacrifices. Um, but yeah, I think black has managed to dodge a bullet here. Looks like black's doing okay. Um, I'm not seeing how white seals the deal in terms of landing a checkmate. Um, it's tricky though. Yeah, maybe white was able to win material. I'm not sure. Oh! Oh, wow. Yeah, no, I think something exciting and interesting happened there, but white played just a touch too fast and missed a critical detail. Um, that's okay. But yeah, you can't take the fighting spirit out of any of the players here. Um, the French does have a reputation for being more drosh than other openings, but there's plenty of room to learn and improve here. Because um, the French is a pretty deep opening. Uh, yes, there are forcing lines, um, but it's, I don't know, it's a positional struggle as well. Oh, I miscalculated earlier. Wow. Yeah, no, this was actually necessary. Wow. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I missed a pairing earlier. Um, more people have joined while we were watching the game. So, oh, now we got five playing and one on pause. Um... So we shall see if we get a pairing, or perhaps um, we'll get to watch another game. This is interesting. Yeah, earlier I thought queen e8 check, king h7, rook f7 was winning material, because the queen was pinned. Um, though that's not how it works. Alright, so. I think the deal here... Oh. Do I get to play a winnerer, or do I not? Okay, I do get to play a winnerer. Is it queen g4 right away? I think so. Um, I might have jumped the gun with queen, eight, queen g4. Uh, I hope I didn't. I think it goes c5, a3. Um, okay... Okay, so Vinman says that he does play queen g4 so early. I think it does go rook g6 and something, but no. Um, my knight is pinned. I have to play either knight e2 or bishop d2 to address this. And I'm not sure which to go with, honestly. Both have pluses and minuses. Um, The, for sure, this has gone in a different direction than I anticipated. I'm curious where knight e2 goes. Um, only because I think I've actually seen this before. And I think my recollection is the same as Vinvin's, that this is better for white, but I'm not sure why. But, no, I believe that... Um, I like I've played Bishop D two before, and then separately I've seen that Knight E two has been played by other players, and it's quite good. And there's nothing wrong with it. So now I could oh wait my Queen's attacked. Um, I could still play Bishop E three like I was about to say, uh, although it seems silly to do so. Um, on the other hand, I kind of like my Queen. It's a really nice attacking piece. I don't see any need to exchange it. Um, 
but this does help my development, so there's that to consider as well. Yeah, Queen takes h7 was possible, I was thinking about it, and ultimately resolved that it just didn't seem to make much sense. Um, now if I th remember right, this sort of exchange is good for white, just in general. So he captures my pawn, I take his bishop, he takes my knight, I take the pawn back. And maybe he plays knight e4, trying to get some play here, but um, these exchanges don't favor him. On the other hand, he doesn't want to play bishop a5, uh, which would just drop the c pawn. So black's kind of obligated to go through with these exchanges, or to simply do bishop takes knight. In which case I'll do B pawn takes, um, and this strengthens my pawns. And that means I'm not going to castle that way, but uh, the pawns uh, can stand. Like this particular pawn formation does have a couple double pawns, but it's really difficult for black to exploit. Um, I've tried, <laughs> and it's just too difficult to break that down. Um, so we're going to control e4, and um, I guess black might play h5. I could always play h4 against it. But yeah, I don't see this knight striking at these pawns anytime soon, so I can just complete my development and um, be on my merry way here. It feels like I'm up a pawn, but my pawn structure is kind of silly. What I really am up is just this bishop here. Well, that's funny how the circle covers the bishop. Does that happen everywhere on the board? No. Okay, so if I encircle the knight, that's fine. If I encircle the rook, that's okay. I could have sworn that I saw the circle going through the bishop. Did I imagine that? Maybe. Maybe I just imagined that. Um... Now, if I want to be mean, I think I do. I prevent castling. And so now black can play rook c8 to kick my bishop, but that would deprive black of the right to castle. Um, and I'm not so sure that f4 was the best destination for my bishop. Really, it wants to be on the outside of the pawn chain which would be uh, this diagonal here. Honestly, I think black should just man up and play rook c8. Um, that's interesting. That loses a pawn if I want to take it. I'm not even convinced that I want the pawn, but if I don't take it immediately, then it goes away. But that pawn is helping secure everything behind that. Oh, plus g2 is hanging, so I should probably deal with this reality. Um, there's some things that are more important than taking pawns. Plus, this is, I really wanted to play a4 here. Um, so now black is still in the center. I just build my attack on the queen side. He can't play b4, is the key. All my pawns and even my bishop participate in making this unpleasant for black. Um, I just don't know how to continue this. And I am running very low on time, but thankfully I do have an increment. All right, so that pawn is very far advanced, but I can't exploit that. Um, I suppose I'll take this to try to open a line somewhere, like here. All right, so this side of the pawn chain, still f breathing fire down toward the king. Um, oh, that's unpleasant. 
Thankfully, G3 is possible and doesn't hang anything. Um, also, thankfully, I have this, although Rook E7 was interesting as well. Um, okay, I have to capture this. But I think the jig stops here because it's this pawn is isolated. It has nothing other than the bishop to support it, and the bishop is pretty easily kicked. And so now we just start to bear an attack on this king here. Oh shit. Well, this is tricky because his rook is hanging. But my rook is also hanging. Um, he had rook take c5, by the way. Um, in time pressure, we both missed this tactic. But I try not to miss tactics twice in the same game. Or at least not miss the same tactic twice. There we go. That was exciting. Yes, yeah, so you saw how his bishop ended up on f5, and my bishop ended up um, somewhere useful. I'm sorry, I said f5, I meant to say h5, defending the pawn on e2, while my king was on f2. But his bishop was on the edge of the board, um, and unfortunately, a bishop can't support the square in front of the pawn while it's also defending the pawn. That's just not how bishops move. Um, so, yeah. Got a half hour left in this event, and four players pausing. Um, three players waiting for a pairing. Two turtle doves. And a partridge and a pear tree. Um, yeah, maybe next time I'll try to do a rated event. Um, because those do tend to be more popular. Anyway, I was saying that, like, last game I did manage to get my pieces outside the pawn chain I managed to move my rooks around the a file and b file as those files opened up and my opponent's pieces did stay cooped behind although he missed one shot where he could have played rook takes c5 and I would have lost uh, a bishop uh, just outright for nothing um, I'm not trying to prey on the opponent's time pressure or anything, I did use the largest possible increment. However, it just wasn't enough for both of us. So. That said, I guess the tournament is avoiding giving a revenge pairing of sorts. Um, we played Dragon Flare last time. Bab 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 is... I don't know why he's not getting a pairing with one of us. Apparently... Uh, he hasn't paused, but maybe he's not in the lobby or something. Um, so with seven people in the tournament, we get to enjoy this time together. Um, I don't know, was it like just the choice of opening or something? Like, how was this not so popular? I guess part of this is the time of day. Um that I'm streaming at a time that's good for US players, that's not so good for players in Europe. Um, it's not exactly ideal for people in the East either. Um, okay, yeah, I guess we could take some time and analyze what happened there. It would probably be a reasonable use of time. Um, just to check. Okay, I am still on that page, so if it if my game suddenly comes to life, I should try to notice what's going on there. Um, uh, so let's go forward a bit. Sorry if that made a lot of noise. Um, so, yeah, I like this. I like the way this bishop ended up outside the pawn chain. Like I was saying, I think black should have just played um, rook to c8. It would have made a lot of sense to me. Ultimately, he did end up playing it anyway. Oh. Yeah, see? This is what I was testing earlier. 
The circle does cut directly through the bishop here. It's like that's two pieces when I draw my circle there. Okay, so I'm not just hallucinating that. It's reproducible. Goodness knows why. Oh, you want to see queen takes h7. Um, yeah, let me actually pause my participation in the event. Um, hopefully this will... Awesome. Third place. Well, that's not bad. Okay. Uh, let's refresh this page. It dismisses the notification. So part of the reason I paused there was so that like if I start turning up analyses and such that I don't um, I'm not using some sort of assistance which is forbidden. Uh, yeah, Rook G8 is book. Wait, wait, is Queen G4? Okay, Queen G4 is playable here. And even has a number of games to boot. Uh, yes, rook g8 is the line, and then queen h6. Knight takes e4 is very unpopular, and that's, I guess, what surprised me about it. Oh, wait, no, I've seen this before. That's right. Um, but knight e2, I forget who recommended this to me. You were mentioning queen takes h7 is also possible here. I don't know why anybody would play knight f3 in this position. That just seems really asking for it. Um, but apparently knight f3 did not immediately lose the game, so there's that. Uh, rook f8, f3. Wow. I mean, I know that a3 here in, in general is okay, but... Um, like, playing f3 here seems really strange. Because white wants to put the knight somewhere useful. And doesn't... If he's going to castle kingside, which now it looks like is absolutely not going to happen, he doesn't want to expose this long diagonal. This is very strange. I don't understand what the players were doing here. Um... Yeah, I don't trust this, but white did win. Um, so I guess that's what matters. Um, I don't know, I think... Okay, another thing that surprised me here is black's willingness to play c4. That costs a vital tempo. Um, and as much as some people say, well, it's a slow maneuvering game and such, that wasn't the case here. There are enough open lines that Tempe do matter quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, C4 looked strange to me. So I just continued my development and continue my development. Black does develop, so I stop him from castling, which... I think if black were able to castle, he would equalize. Um, if he somehow were able to get his king on c8, he'd be able to do all kinds of mayhem, and it would be very difficult to assault his king. But with this king located on e8, he's quite a far distance away from anywhere safe. And like his weak points are spread out all over, you can't use the king to hold on to the b-pawn. Um, and so he has to use his rooks and knight to just make sure he's not dropping the f-pawn or h-pawn. And it's not so clear what he's attacking either. I was saying during the game that h5 might be an idea in some positions. Here clearly he just drops a pawn. Um, if you don't believe me, because I can understand why you might not believe that it drops a pawn, because he gets the pawn right back, right? But no, this is a thematic idea. Watch out for this sort of thing when you're doing rook takes pawn. Uh, you might lose a rook this way. Um, so black can't take on g2. Um, so yeah, this is just a free pawn outright. Um, and attempting to change the move order around doesn't seem to affect anything either. Maybe black can attack c3, but is really the h pawn worth as much as the c pawn? 
especially when white's threatening to push h4 and just race up the board and black's king is exposed in the center. There's no way that h5 works here. But earlier, before I played bishop e2, maybe this is worth considering. Um, I think I did mention this at this point. I said, like, I would just play h4. Um, and my intent is to play bishop e2 and snap the pawn. I'm not sure what black could do about this. But um, it's hard to see where else black can start exchanging pawns and pieces um, and try to do something about his weaknesses or try to inspire some sort of weakness in the white position. It's not so clear what black can do. Um, so you ask me to analyze this game, but I'm not sure what there is to analyze because I think I did play well. I'm not seeing anything I did obviously wrong. Here I wasn't sure about f3. It really felt like I should have something better. But, um, like what I was looking at was this and then rook a7. I just didn't see how this could ultimately be a good thing. Because um, white runs out of targets here. Uh, unless white's other rook can teleport to the 7th rank or something, it's difficult for white to make progress. Meanwhile, black has the simple idea of like knight d5, knight c3. And okay, so you don't have to take on b5, you could just like take the knight. But what has white accomplished? The, I mean, yes, white's bishop is far superior to black's, but... I don't know. This looks like something that white has a great deal of difficulty winning. And so he should push for more in the middle game and not try to win at this endgame stage. Like if I pin the bishop, uh, king d6, and it's really not clear how white makes progress. Um... Okay, instead of rook a1, let's see, instead of rook a1, which rook a1 would that be? Rook e7 check instead of rook a1. I'm not sure where you're talking about here. Maybe you're talking about one of these variations? Oh, later. Okay, fine. Yeah, I just want to move onward, because I think f3 was okay. Um, this pawn is really difficult to defend. It's a big liability, while black has so many other weaknesses to attend to as well. Um, I wasn't sure about bishop c5. It's very useful because it does block um, black from defending the c pawn directly. It's useful because white could potentially play d5 and open the center at a moment that's inconvenient. Um, it's also useful just trapping the king in a little bit, uh, although that's kind of hard to exploit with white's king so far exposed as well. Uh, oh, here's a thought. What about bishop f1? No, then e2 immediately. Uh, bishop f1 does not work. So I guess g3 was the best way to go here. Um, it does force this liquidation. And here, yeah, uh, after I played rook b to a1, I saw that I could have just played this. Um, black has to um, give away a pawn. But I don't know. That doesn't seem wise. I think far better here would just be take the pawn um, and just keep building threats. The threat is much stronger than the execution here because the only black pieces that can attack this e1 square are all on the opposite side of the board and they can't, there's no open line to get to this side. It's so just taking the pawn and then who knows how you follow this up. Um, but, you know, black is down, what, one pawn right now? 
His king's exposed. Um, yeah, it's just... It was interesting because I was so focused on the possibility of activating my pieces. Um, I did want to force this e2 move so I could get my king toward the center. Um, partly this is just a uh, means of gaining time on the clock. Just having some time to think about where it is that my rooks are going to go. Um, but this is a concession that gives black a free tempo because I end up playing the rook over to a1 later. Um, and this bishop on h5, to my surprise, defends the f pawn, so this is actually pretty awkward for white. And yeah, here he should just take c5, and um, that's all she wrote. Yeah, there's not much white can do here to improve his position. Um, it's a pretty unfortunate position. Like, I assume White's last shot would be something like this. And um, Black just has to play a reasonable move here, and he's okay. Um, it's tricky, but... I mean, if you play, like, Rook d5, then White could play Rook b7, and it's not so... No, Black could just play this. Never mind. Yeah, Black's fine. I was going to say it's not so easy to escape the rooks, but you just play this way, and you're safe. Um, that's probably the easiest way out. So yeah, I just dropped heavy material because I just blundered in time pressure. Um, but I don't know. This is interesting. I think absolutely I should have just taken b5. Um, yes, I do want to win this e pawn, but winning it is going to take considerable effort. Um, I really missed my chance earlier, uh, which is where. Here, he plays bishop c6. Um, I suppose I could play this straight away. It's rook e7. And this move, I believe, is forced. Like, if he plays to f8, I just play rook takes pawn, and then rook takes pawn. Um, with this discovery, so I'd be able to just snatch both these pawns on the e-file. But, with him going to d8, then I could just take f7. Oh, actually, this defends the weakness on f3. This would have been perfect. This would have been exactly what my position needed. Now he could try to... no he can't. If he tries to harass my rook to get it to no longer defend this, not only can I move along the file, but I can just pin this rook and now be up material. So <laughs> rook e7 was kind of the miracle refutation of bishop c6. I was wondering how this attack came out of nowhere, because it's not like I did anything wrong. I mean, the only questionable thing I did here was f3, and I thought that this was okay. Uh, I thought the worst aspect of this was, frankly, that he just moves his knight up to d5 and e3, maybe takes on c2, maybe menaces g2 a little bit. I don't know, but... Um, apparently... Yeah, the way that was played just by pushing the pawn to e3 seems to really freeze black. Um, he has to be able to break down this king side, and he wasn't able to do it quickly enough. Um, I was... No, he has to take. Never mind, I was not surprised by that capture. But my position is just dominating uh, tempo-wise. He's just too slow. Yeah, it's a difficult variation to play. Um, my pieces got very active here. Like, just look at this. Rook on c8. You can see the circle going through the rook here, too. That's funny. Uh, rook on g8 renders correctly. Rook king... I think the circle is not going through the king. Must be something special about that c8 square. Anyway, um... 
If I do it here, that works just fine. Either that or I'm imagining that it works fine. It, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, but look at these pieces on the back rank. The king's stuck in the center. Black's bishop on the same color square as, like, five of his pawns. Uh, he's got a backward pawn there. I mean, I've got a backward pawn. I've got some weaknesses, but they're just harder to get at. It takes more time. He doesn't have that time. Um, I think, like you saw, he ultimately did play rook c8. It would have been better for him to play that sooner rather than later. Uh, knight e4 uh, outright drops the c pawn. Uh, I elected to castle instead of taking the c pawn. Uh, that was mistaken. I could have just taken this. And again, this idea uh, gets that trapped. But if he plays... Oh, this is what I was afraid of. I retreat, and now he can just snap one of my pawns. And he's threatening c2. I saw this during the game. Um, so yeah, I correctly avoided this. It was very tricky, this knight e4, uh, with the hidden threat on the c-file. But I just resolved, you know, I'm just going to castle. No big deal. And now he defends his c-pawn, so I can't take it. But uh, it's really easy to undermine the b-pawn. Um, you saw during the game that I anticipated this. And... Yeah, my bishop is really nicely placed here. So I think instead of knight e4, going for this kind of trappy stuff, expecting me to take on c4, I should just not play hope chess. And, um, you know, find a way to develop. Seek a way out of here. Um, it's not easy. Especially with c4 having been played, there's no pawn breaks. He has to somehow get at the base of the pawn chain on c3, which really only this knight can do, and can only do it from the e4 square. So it's definitely an uphill battle getting the knight and bishop and rook involved. Um, you know, if he can move this knight somewhere, I don't know, like e7, then he can move his bishop to c6 and get his king out, uh, connect the rooks. Maybe rook c8 isn't so good, but black is just so tied up. Like, how do you get hamstrung like this? Well, I guess part of black's problem is that he moved the knight and then, like, didn't have anywhere to move it to next. I mean, you could go to a5, but then from a5, where is it going to go? Um, so I think he should have stuck with one... A move that's more in line with what's in the book, which would be like bishop d7, which takes place in a good many French lines, but I think here, playing it to d7, like I played to e2 for crying out loud, that's not a very aggressive move at all. Um, but, I mean, now you could play things like bishop c6, or maybe even bishop a4. I don't know if this is any good. Um, uh, I assume king d2. I could be wrong. And black just develops. And I don't know if he wants to castle here or not, but this is more flexible than what he played. Like, the bishop had no choice but to go to d7 or to develop via b7 or a6, but um, black chose a development scheme that just didn't offer him any squares and relied on this trick that I just didn't fall for. I just castled rather than taking the free pawn, and that castling kind of makes things very difficult for black. Um, interesting point here, though, would be uh, what if I castled the other way? Well, I guess we'll save that for another game, huh? That seems a bit adventurous, but, you know, if I could get my bishop to f4... And my other bishops somewhere on this diagonal, we control a lot of squares. Um, this looks really nice. And that's difficult for a rook to attack. 
and my king can do well defending most of the stuff on the queen's side. Um, so the trick would be, like, now I'd have to find somewhere to put my rooks to break through somehow. And while I'm looking at d5, I don't think I can actually achieve it here. Um, so this, like, threatens to move, the, plug the knight on d5 or f5. Maybe even put the bishop there, I don't know. Um, so while I'm almost threatening bishop takes c4, I'm not because that would lead to a skewer. Um, also, even if this bishop weren't on c7, he could still attack my bishop with his rook on c8 and then take on c3. So this is not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I'd have to open the center somehow. Again, probably play something like f3, although here now rook takes is more deadly. So I have to prepare that like this. Also threatening to take c4, but not really like as I explained. Um, see, so yeah, castle castling queenside, while it works in many positions, doesn't seem very effective here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Castle and kingside seems quite strong. It seems like I just played a good common sense move here, which is really unusual given how I play openings, and even more unusual considering this was a blitz game. But it's good to see that even in these situations, I can find some good moves. So. Yeah, like you're saying, um, five knight takes e4 is inaccurate for sure. Maybe a mistake, but certainly asking for trouble. Uh, I remember I've played at least a couple blitz games where I played bishop d2. I just didn't have very much fun after black took this. Even if I did king takes or queen takes, it didn't really matter because black's got good pressure there. But knight e2 just seems to resolve all of white's problems, and black still has huge development issues to solve. Um, I debated not capturing the queen. My main concern was that black might play rook g6. Like, if I play bishop e3 here, I mean, yes, he can capture, but I didn't think this was going to happen, but he could. I wasn't really so concerned about that as I was about just black developing and my position's kind of scary. Um, it's just kind of easy to play black side of this and white's kind of cluttered. So I opted for something simple, but I'm not sure. Well, actually, the other side of this is it like reduces the pressure on my knight. So I get a good tempo move with bishop f4, another tempo move, this is all pretty standard book ideas. And then I think between having played knight e4 earlier and playing c4 right here, black is just asking way too much of his position and never gets a chance to activate the rest of his pieces. And so the rest um, is history. All right, yeah, thanks for stopping by. So yeah, this was my outing with the French defense, even though I didn't get to play it. Um, we did get to explore this from White's point of view. It's interesting. Um, I'm not sure about a lot of things here, for sure, but um, <laughs> it's funny. I used to memorize this sort of stuff pretty religiously. I think black can maybe get away with king f8 here. Some people have tried it, I think. If I'm not getting my move order mixed up, and maybe I am. Um, maybe the move order is actually c5, c3, something, something, takes, takes, king f8. I'm not sure. I have to try this again sometime. You guys, if you happen to know good resources for this, feel free to comment. Um, I'd be glad to learn it more sometime. 
Uh, that said, that's the French defense in a nutshell. Um, there's a lot going on. It's generally a very positional game. Leads to some interesting end games. So really, that would be something that would fit in my repertoire if I didn't already have a good defense to 1e4. Um, I'll have to see if I can find something equally interesting for 1d4. And very well it might be 1e6, um, with potential to transpose into a French, or potential to transpose into... Um, oh, I can't do that from this position. But, you know, be able to transpose into a French, or to a Bogo, or a Nimzo, or all those uh, Indian openings. That might be something for me to explore. Um, there's just so much to learn, and never enough time to learn it. But it could be fun sometime, if I do find the time for it. Anyhow, I hope this has been somewhat entertaining, instructive, or... Um, yeah, let me know. Uh, if there's an opening you want me to play, maybe um, let me know. I might give it a whirl. But um, yeah, I think that wraps it up for today. So, third place. Not bad. Uh, thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time. Have a good night.